This is a video to look at question five on the Chemistry Olympiad of 2021. It's an organic question. It's worth 21 marks and the total for the paper was 85. So this was a significant question uh, and important that it was done well and quickly. The early information in the question about Donald Trump um, is important to read, um, but fundamentally the compound hydroxychloroquine um, is this structure here, this skeletal structure here, and the question is about the formation of that as a series of uh, experiments. It's important to keep the structure of this in your mind as you do the question so that you're able to um, interpret it um, correctly. Some of the work is guesswork, uh, some of it will come from informed chemistry. So the first part of the question um, asks um, about the first part of the synthetic route um, as it goes from A to B to C and then finally to the structure on the right hand side. The first question they ask is a straightforward one, worth one mark, which is the uh, UPAC name of this particular molecule. Um, from a skeletal point of view, it has one, two, three, four, five carbon, so it's a pent. Um, this is the significant functional group in terms of naming. It's a ketone, it's on carbon number two, so it's a pentan two ohm, and the chloro group is on number one, two, three, four, five. So the answer to the first one for one mark is 5-chloro-pentan-2-ohm. Then we move on to the structures of B and C. It's important as we do this that we keep this structure in mind because it's important that we, we work from there. So going from A to B involves um, bringing in this structure um, together this structure. Now this is a common thing in questions that when you have a carbon chlorine bond um, that that is uh, one that has a relatively longer bond length and can be easily replaced so by nucleophilic substitution uh, there's often a situation where the chlorine leaves and these this bond pair here uh, becomes a lone pair on the chloride ion. So uh, in order to attack this C delta plus we must have a lone pair of electrons. I, there are two choices on this um, there's either the lone pair there or the lone pair there. Now, of course, this um, oxygen has more protons, so this lone pair here is more available for donation. Or you might simply know that nitrogen is more likely to be basic and um, is a better, um, uh, better at its lone pair donation. So it's likely to be the nitrogen. But this is all also borne out by this structure here being similar to this structure here and this part being similar to this part here, it's likely that the nitrogen is going to go into there to replace the chlorine, and we've got the right number of carbons before we reach this area here. So this makes us think straight away that, that B will have the structure um, where it starts with exactly the same on this side, so we just go to, into the double bond oxygen, it goes down, and then of course we must make sure that we're careful when we go um, up, down, then the chlorine would come in, but we now know that that is likely to be a nitrogen. Now, how we draw the rest of it is obviously very simple. We can continue the, the pattern on in this direction so that we then go um, down and up and OH. And of course, the CH2, CH3 group here has to be drawn in as well. So we would draw that in perhaps there and there. And so that would get you one mark for the structure of B. The structure of C involves um, ammonia coming in. And we can see here that in the structure, oxygen has disappeared. This C double bond O oxygen has disappeared and a nitrogen has been introduced. So it is very likely that this nitrogen is attacking into this adenine group here. In fact, it's, it's very common, in fact, for... Um, for um, uh, carbonyl groups to be, so carbonyl groups, C double bond O, to be attacked by um, derivatives of ammonia, NH2X. Now this is ammonia, so um, a, a common reaction that we have here is, first of all, a nucleophilic addition, where the electrons attack into this C delta plus. That will produce a, an, an intermediate stage where we have got um, a carbon with um, um, a nitrogen with two hydrogens and an X, and this will then become O minus, which 
of course, um, is as a result of those electrons flipping up there and those electrons going into there. This will carry a positive charge. The proton will um, migrate to there, and then we get a dehydration. So if the proton migrates across, we get C NH X, and this will be OH, and this then dehydrates. This dehydrates so that we then get C, and so we were left with a double bond to the nitrogen, then to the X, and water is released. So it's a nucleophilic addition followed by a condensation, a loss of water. So this is exactly what's going to happen here, is that this C double bond O is going to be replaced by a C double bond N and then just an H on the end, which you can see the, um, the structure there. You can't necessarily see the double bond. And clearly this little bit here is, is quite tricky if you've not met this particular nucleophilic addition system before. So the structure of C will be exactly the same as the structure of B. So it will go um, into the double bond oxygen, but instead of the double bond oxygen, we will go into the nitrogen and a hydrogen, and it then continues in exactly the same way as we have above. So if I were to continue the, the diagram, it goes to the nitrogen, then we get the ethyl group, and then on to the OH group at the end. So that is the structure of C, and that would gain you one mark. So that would gain you one mark for the structure of C. Okay, now C has to then be converted back into this, this structure, this part of the structure here is identical to the answer here given under C, so this structure is exactly the same, so we haven't got anything to do over on this side of the molecule, it's just that the uh, double bond NH has to become uh, carbon with an extra hydrogen there and also uh, the nitrogen has an extra hydrogen there. So in other words, we are adding across the double bond here with a hydrogen and a hydrogen. Now the addition of hydrogen across a double bond, hydrogenation, um, is usually achieved with hydrogen and a nickel catalyst. And so the answer to part C is that this will be hydrogen with a nickel catalyst will bring about step one. Now, the other options, bromine adding across, um, oxidation, oxidation, these are not, um, none of these are, are relevant to this reduction or hydrogenation as it is added across the double bond. Okay, so the next part of the question moves on to um, a different area um, where we are going to come back to the original in a second. So the next part of the question asks about um, a benzene ring. And if you are in your second year of study, it's almost certain that you will have looked at the nitration and possibly the halogenation of a benzene ring. So um, the Olympiad work prefers the Kekulé structure, the Kekulé structure being one where you show all the double bonds and single bonds as a, a resonance form rather than showing the resonance hybrid that many of you will be familiar with as a, um, as a circle where the um, pi electrons are delocalized. So um, the, the first part, D, is relatively straightforward. It's a, it's a nitration. And the, the fact that over here you can see a benzene ring, Kekulé structure, it's got a chlorine on it, which is going to happen at this stage. And it's also got a nitrogen there, um, which indicates that we've only got one nitrogen um, going on in that position. So if we were to draw D with the Kekulé structure, we draw it um, in exactly the same form as they've given and then you'll put a nitro group on the top. So the nitro group, this is standard um, nitration of a benzene ring. This combination produces the NO2 one plus ion, which by electrophilic substitution attacks into the benzene ring. Um, FeCl3 is a, is a halogen carrier. It can carry the chlorine. It becomes FeCl4 minus, and this produces the Cl1 plus ion, uh, which is able to again tack into the benzene ring. Now, if you have been taught um, about um, the deactivating effect of the nitrogen and its direction into the three position, you can quickly work out that the chlorine will go into that position there. If you haven't been taught that, you can still get it from this structure here, where you've got the nitrogen and the chlorine is two units away. So you know straight away that the chlorine, all we do for E is we follow through exactly the same structure, um, but this time we have both the nitro group present and we have a chlorine on carbon number three. Uh, once again, we have um, hydrogen gas with platinum, so we are likely to get hydrogenation reduction, 
um, and the double bonds involved here are the double bonds between the nitrogen and the oxygen in this in the NO2 group so we get we get a reduction at this point and so F is going to be exactly the same as uh, as we've had but we in order to create this NH NH2 group we need F to then contain not the nitro group but the amine group so that the, this is still Cl but this one now becomes NH2 from there it becomes the amine phenylamine type rather than the nitro group now you can see straight away that they've flipped this in this picture so that when we bring in the um, structures um, in a second you can see that um, this is um, got the NH2 in position if you like at 2 o'clock and the Cl is at 10 o'clock in our structure important you understand that However, it can be seen very ob obviously at this point that the NH is going to use its lone pairs potentially to attack into a carbon in that position. So if we look straight away at this, we can anticipate what's going to happen is that there must be um, a structure, and this is symmetrical here, this is an ester group with an ethyl group on the end, but it's symmetrical on the other side. So fundamentally, we need to have something in this, in this region which is going to interact so that we already know that this structure here, reagent Z, is going to, we're not asked at this stage what reagent Z is, but we know reagent Z is going to have these two identical ester groups either side, there's going to be a carbon there, and there's almost certainly going to be a carbon here, and the carbon here is going to interact with that nitrogen there. So we already know quite a lot about Z as we move on to the um, uh, formation of Z in the next part of the question. So another relatively three straightforward marks for the identities of D, E and F. We then move on to, to Z. Um, so straight away we can see the symmetrical nature that we've had before here and we can see that that is the, exactly what I've described in the last part and we know that we need somehow to have an extra carbon into this region before we can attack into Z. So um, we'll look at how that works in a, in a second. When we add a base, we know that a base is um, a proton acceptor. Um, so we need to look at this structure to see which proton is most likely to be lost. The proton that's most likely to be lost will be the closest to um, other elect uh, to electronegative elements that are present on nearby carbons. And it's very clear straight away that this carbon here would be particularly acidic in that its bond length between the carbon and the hydrogen will be very long because the electron density is being drawn towards these oxygens. That's a very major effect. So we can straight away work out what anion V is, and that's quite an easy one. Um, it will have the structure where we go to the oxygen, then double bond O, then we will get the negative charge, then we will go back up to the double bond O, O, and then the ethyl group on the end. So that will be the structure. Now, there, there's going to be different variations on this in the mark scheme, no doubt. Um, because, of course, these oxygens uh, may draw this electron density in to create a negative charge on either of the, of the oxygens, and that would create a... So if the negative charge came there, that would become a single bond, um, and, of course, um, this would then become a double bond between, the, um, uh, between that carbon and that oxygen. So alternatives that you could have there would be a negative charge on the oxygen, single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond oxygen, Alternatively, you could draw it with a dotted line all the way around here with a negative charge, which is the, the resonance uh, hybrid, which is perfectly acceptable for the structure of V minus. Let's move across then to um, W plus. Here we're acidifying, and so we are adding a proton. So we're looking for some lone pairs to add a proton to, but there's only the oxygen that is capable of accepting that, and this, this has total symmetry. There is no choice for, um, for W because cation W will simply have a proton on one of these three oxygens and it doesn't matter which. So if I put it on the first oxygen, we would have OH with a one plus, and then the rest of the structure would be identical to that that had already been drawn. And you would get marks for that, which of course would be pretty generous for the protonation. Now this loses, this loses um, an ethanol. So any one of these, of course, would be an ethanol, or indeed that. Now this is the obvious one to, uh, to be lost, because we're forming a cation. 
So that positive charge is likely to transfer to this carbon. In other words, this pair of electrons here, will, this bond will be broken. The electron density will go up, releasing CH, CH3, CH2OH, which is the formula of that. And so that will leave us with a cation with the positive charge on this carbon here. So the, the cation W plus will just literally look like with an oxygen there. Then it'll go to the positively charged um, carbon before it returns to the oxygen um, and down in that area. Now, of course, there's, there's numbers of ways of, of drawing that particular st structure. So a, a simpler way of drawing it might be um, on the horizontal, so that we would then have O through to there with a positive charge. Now, once again, it could be that the positive charge is distributed evenly throughout this. So a dotted line with a positive charge would be perfectly acceptable, or indeed to have a, a double bond of the positive charge on the, uh, sorry, a double bond and the positive charge on the oxygen would also work for structures for cation um, there. So, um, uh, in, interestingly, the cation um, uh, X plus actually scores two marks. That cation really generous gets two marks, um, whereas the um, uh, the W plus has only got one mark. I guess that's a simpler thing. An anion V minus also scored um, two marks, um, which is really quite generous in terms of marking. These two are going to combine, but it's pretty obvious what, how they're going to combine. They're going to combine in order uh, with the positive area. Um, interacting with the negative area. So when we bring those two cations together, we're going to get a, a relatively complex uh, structure. We Again, we're going to lose some ethanol before we get to, to Z. Um, so if we just combine those two, it's I think it's really straightforward if I just bring that together with that. Can you see for Y? All I need to draw out is the oxygen. I'm just drawing this structure here, double bond O. Then we've got the carbon. Then we've got double bond O then the O, and then there, and then this negative charge is just going to interact with this positive charge, so there will be a bond, of course, don't forget that, and then that will just go out to two oxygens, which have got ethyl groups on them, and so they just go like that, like that. And there is the structure of Y, uh, which you get one mark for. Now, Z, of course, has, we've got to lose a, um, a we've got to somehow try and lose um, a, another ethanol group. So the ethanol group can come off from a, a number of places. But if you remember back, we had this structure. We know that this structure has got to be the attacking structure. We know that from this, this structure here, that this part, the ethyl group oxygen ester part here, repeated, this part has to be kept intact, which means that the ethanol must be coming off from that region there. So when we come back to draw the structure of Z, we need to take um, an ethanol off from this region here, keeping this part intact. So if we just come down a little bit lower for drawing Z, Z will have the same structure as we've just seen. But I'm going to take off an ethanol group from below so that rather than take off, so if I take off, let's say, the right-hand ethanol group, um, I will be left with O there and the structure there. However, if this is going to, to leave, this would leave this carbon, um, we, uh, the, this carbon would therefore have a deficiency of hydrogens. Um, if this goes as CH3, CH2, O, and an H, an H clearly has to be uh, obtained from either this position or that position. This one um, of these these two hydrogens um, are likely to um, be involved in the formation of this CH3, CH2, OH. Now, th this one, of course, is effectively then going to become a double bond. So the, the double bond would be would be formed into this region here. So there you would get a double bond, and then you would have lost one hydrogen from there, but there would still be one hydrogen that would be there. So, so fundamentally, the hydrogen from there has come from the, um, the hydrogen that was there, and so we create that structure there. And so Z, Z also picks up one mark. And this is the structure that's going to interact with the nitrogen in the next part of the, 
um, of, of the system. So this has to interact with the nitrogen on the benzene ring, which we saw in the la last question. And the lone pairs are going to fundamentally replace this O, CH2, CH3 part here to create the next part of the, of the structure and the next part of the um, question. So as we, as we move on, we have to look at how um, the structure um, then makes the final hydroxychloroquine. Now, this is, um, this is probably the, the, the most difficult part of, of this, but a lot of it can be done by guesswork and just simply working out exactly, um, uh, exactly what the final structure looks like and look at the other various bits and pieces. So if we, if we first of all, identify this um, structure here, um, which is very often used in the Olympiad, along with other um, reagents for replacing um, a, 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 an OH group with a CL group. So there's a there's a series of these they use the series of these that are used in Olympiad questions, which replace an OH on a carbon chain and put a chlorine in its place. And this includes SOCl2, but also possibly more simply PCl5 or even PCl3. These are all reagents that they have used in the past for taking an OH group off and putting a chlorine on. So we can anticipate, perhaps, that in, the, um, in this structure here, we will have a, an, a, an OH group, but by the time we've got to J, we will have the um, chlorine replacing it. Now, we can see this structure in here. We can see the whole of this structure in this particular position here. So the only difference is that that is NH and that is NH2. So if this is being brought in, we can anticipate that J must have a, um, a benzene ring with the chlorine there, a nitrogen there, but also if we're looking at, at J, we're anticipating that J might potentially have a chlorine in that position so that the lone pair of the nitrogen will go in and the chlorine in this position will um, disappear. So we're already thinking that perhaps J, having been attacked by this, J has its chlorine in this position, it has a nitrogen in that position, and we're thinking at this moment that perhaps that is a chlorine, which means we also know the structure of a uh, potential structure of I. If we go back up to I, perhaps I is exactly the same as this structure, but with a OH in this position rather than the CL. So if we go back up to here, we could perhaps draw I out straight away um, as being the benzene ring again, and then a ring with a nitrogen in it, an OH in this position, and then we have a double bond there and our double bond um, in that position there. And this, of course, is completed with the CL there for I, and we would then have uh, the bonds in its normal place for a Kekulé structure. So this is a potential structure. Um, and that may well, those are likely to be the answers for I and J as we build towards this structure here. So you can see how in this question it might be, it, it, there's certainly good value in working backwards to look at the structures and obviously this is key information here that this is a, um, a, a reagent that is capable of taking out an OH and putting in a CL. So we've got to go from this position through to this position which means that we are going to cyclize this area here. So let's have a, a quick look at how that might work. Now this nitrogen has got a hydrogen on at this stage, so when we start to look at G, so I'll just draw G at the bottom because it may be a little bit more difficult, um, we see in this structure here that this, if I call this the, the nitrogen there, which is the nitrogen there, if I call that carbon number one, this would be carbon number one. If this is carbon number two, that will be carbon number two, and it clearly needs to lose something at some point um, because that carbon is in the ring is not involved with any derivatives on the side. So if I were to wrap this around to complete the ring, this must be carbon number three. So I'm saying that that is likely to be carbon number three. So carbon number three is going to interact with this carbon here 
which is if I label that as 4, that is 4 over there. 3 is going to wrap around and form a ring in that structure. So as I start to draw G, I will start by putting in the same Kekulé structure as we've had throughout with the chlorine in that position and now we start to wrap around. So if we go nitrogen, hydrogen, there is carbon number one. We've then got the double bond into that position. Then we go down into that position and we're going to get the C double bond O and that is ultimately going to link with that carbon there. Now this carbon here in position number two has got a further structure involved. So position number two has still got of course a double bond oxygen and then it's also linked to an oxygen and to an ethyl group. So this is the likely structure, this is the likely structure of, um, of G. It's the likely structure of G and that will be getting you marks for getting that particular structure. And clearly there is a, a loss in that cyclization of all of this. So when number three goes into this area here, clearly there is a loss again of, a, of an ethanol group in there. So that when that number three moves into there, we still got the C double bond O. Now, once again, there, there is an alternative to answer for G because G doesn't match our structure up here where the nitrogen doesn't have a hydrogen and we've got two double bonds within the ring which will help with the delocalization. There's two double bonds here but there could be a proton transfer. So the proton transfer across to this oxygen would then create exactly the same structure as we had above here. So an alternative answer for G would be exactly the same ring as we had before with the chlorine in that position. But this time the nitrogen loses its proton, forms a double bond with the next carbon, which then forms a single bond to the next carbon. Then we get a double bond to the next carbon. Now the O will be the one that contains the, the, the proton as we go through to there, so that we would then have, sorry, we would then have double bond O, O, and through. So uh, this really is the two possible answers. Um, this one is, it just involves a proton shift and uh, delocalization throughout this part of the ring as opposed to delocalization through that part of the ring. In other words, these two are um, isomeric of each other and um, simply would be extreme forms um, of a possible resonance hybrid. So we might shift at this stage to, to use this structure and the reason why we might shift to use that structure is simply because we have got this structure worked out as a result of looking at this structure here and replacing the Cl with the OH, which fits with all this information. So perhaps we'll go for this one, which is acceptable. But clearly, if you had a double bond oxygen there and the N with the H there, that clearly would be an acceptable answer as well. Now, the interesting thing is that in the mark scheme, um, there is um, only one mark for, for J, but we actually get two marks for the structure, either structure, either with the C double bond O or with the OH. There's two marks for getting I. We've got G, and G can be either the structure with the OH or there, and that was also worth two marks, which again, very generous. Um, and finally, we have to work out the structure of H. Well, clearly between G and I, we have lost the whole of this structure here. We've lost the whole of that structure there. So we need somehow to remove that structure before we get to this particular position there. Which means that, that H um, has to, in some way, um, start to lose its ester, its ester group. So um, in order to lose the ester group, we notice at this point that we lose carbon dioxide. Now, what that means, the loss of carbon dioxide, when we come back down to this area here, when we look at this structure here, the loss of carbon dioxide is likely to be this carbon with this, these two oxygens, which means before we get to the loss of carbon dioxide, so the full loss of carbon dioxide is going to leave us with the whole of this disappeared, so the carbon dioxide is going to go. So before we do that, we've got to remove this um, this, this um, ethyl group or possibly the oxygen with the ethyl group. 
So when we come back to look at the conditions here, we, we can see that this is under alkaline conditions. We've got sodium hydroxide um, in um, ethanol, and this looks as if it may well be a, um, a hydrolysis of the ester. So if we go back to this structure, what actually is likely to happen here is that we're going to get the OH minus iron attacking into here, which will um, uh, cause the loss of this group here, and so the ester is hydrolyzed, so this OCH2CH3 group is going to be replaced by um, simply um, an OH. Now, what that means if we look at the structure of G is that we're simply going to replace this group on G with an OH. So that group on G, so either of these answers replaced with an OH is the answer to H. So, um, so the answer for H is the same as this, but where the, the O group has been replaced with just simply an OH. And that is, of course, hydrolysis. Now, it, you will also notice, of course, this is done in sodium hydroxide hydrolysis, so this is alkaline hydrolysis. So actually the very best answer is not replace it with OH, but because it's sodium hydroxide, you might choose to just leave it as O minus, the salt of the acid, or you might choose to make, put the sodium ion in as well um, to show that it's the sodium salt of the carboxylic acid at that point. So the structure of H will read exactly the same as that, C double bond O, OH is an acceptable answer, or even better if you put in O minus or O minus Na plus because of the appreciation that this is under alkaline conditions and it's an alkaline hydrolysis. And th therefore, when we move back up into here, you can see that the carboxylic acid that was created, that we just talked about, it, whether it's in the salt form or not, if it loses carbon dioxide, will go back to have nothing on that carbon there. So to look back at the original structure, when it cyclizes, we lose this bit. Uh, sorry, we lose this little bit here as it cyclizes. That's still there. The first stage is that we um, hydrolyze the ester in alkaline conditions, which makes that C double bond OOH a carboxylic acid. But because it's under alkaline conditions, it's likely to be an alkaline salt. And then we do hydrolysis with the sodium hydroxide, where the OH minus ion goes into there, and the CH3, CH2, O minus or OH um, plus, if it's been protonated, um, will leave from that area there. This is completely unexplained, the high temperature reflux losing the loss of carbon dioxide, completely unexplained, but cl completely log logical to re re make us uh, make it very clear that there is nothing left on carbon number two. Um, so some generous marks in that last little section, possibly the hardest part of it, um, but still very doable.